Outside of this committee, I've worked tirelessly to expand access to electric vehicles. In my first year in Congress, I co-led the Clean School Bus Act with now Vice President Kamala Harris, which would allocate $1 billion over five years to replace diesel school buses with electric ones. Since then, I've worked to ensure robust investments in electric vehicles have been included in any infrastructure legislation that has come to the House floor. With Representative Cardenas, I co-led the Clean Commute for Kids Act, which laid the blueprint for clean school bus provisions of the Infrastructure Investments and Jobs Act. Ultimately, we were able to secure about $5 billion for the replacement of diesel school buses with electric ones across this country. A key component for any plan for electric vehicle expansion is the grid. Expanding our national grid will not only benefit individual consumers, but communities at large. As you can tell, this issue is very important to me, having had a career for 15 years as a public school teacher and stood in many bus lines and taught many kids who, who were affected by the harmful impacts of breathing in diesel fuels. So my questions today are for, well, my first question is for Mr. Wood. One problem I have heard in conversations about electric vehicles is their applicability in rural areas. Enormous mountainous rural areas where there must be special consideration for larger placement for larger charger placement and range. What can the federal government do to incentivize utilities to build charging infrastructure in rural communities? And is there any technical expertise you think would be helpful for federal agencies to provide in that process? Thank you so much for the question. I'll first say utilities have an obligation to serve all customers, so in urban and in rural areas, and that's part of our public service mission. So to your point, electric school buses are already an important aspect of our electrification plan. It's something we are already looking at. And some of my contacts throughout the industry when I've talked to in transit agencies and when they've switched to electric buses have told me about their testing procedures, which might be loading the bus down, running it in very cold temperatures, very hot temperatures with a, lot, with a lot of weight in it. So some of those some of those research methods are already in flight. I think additional, you know, additional assistance from DOE for modeling for what the batteries would look like, for the amount of energy consumed, any of that could be helpful. But I would say, you know, as I said earlier in my opening comments, the infrastructure, EV infrastructure that's already been passed is a great help if you want to carve out for electric school buses to especially get the first cost problem down is more of the issue for the school bus is, um, problem of if a school district needs five school buses but they can only afford three because electric may cost more. That to me is where I've seen more of the challenge versus the infrastructure itself. Thank you. And I know that expanding our electric grid not only provides opportunities for zero carbon transportation but an array of other zero carbon infrastructure and resources. Mr. Wood, can you expand on what the agricultural industry specifically stands to gain from a national expansion of our electric grid? So when you think about electrification and agriculture, the equipment, electrification, typically those, that piece of equipment is very, very precise. So if you drive an E, for example, and you barely press the accelerator, the vehicle barely moves forward. You don't have the idle that pulls you forward. So if you're thinking about planting a certain number of crops or you need to see a certain number of crops in a certain area to make a particular harvest, having more precise, more precision, or if you have those, that equipment that becomes autonomous and being able to control it, those are all benefits of how the agriculture industry can gain from electrification. We just have to be able to get there and understand what those implications are. Thank you so much. And I don't really have time for my last question, but I'm sure I'll hear the answer at some point. I'm just interested to know what investments and resources can Congress provide to, uh, to address the increased demand for EVs? And how can we help to build out the pipeline for manufacturers who produce these electric vehicles? Uh, there's not really enough time to answer, but hopefully throughout the rest of this hearing, uh, that'll be incorporated in answers as we go along. Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you.